all of them are freehand. No, none of these screws are navigated. And uh, last year, during surgery, I had to revise the screw five times, approximately four or five times, which means that, uh, can I have my presentation? Which means that uh, when we pass the screws, we check an x-ray. We pass freehand screws. It's not under x-rays. And then uh, the surgeon realizes, the senior surgeon in the team, that this needs to be redone. So this happened about five times in 800. And when I look around, there are cases that we do which would have you know, benefited. Uh, we would have benefited if there was navigation. But we still got away, and uh, we didn't have any mishaps in this. Now, um, why not navigated screws? That's the key question, right? So the simple answer is I do not have access to navigation. And I'm a, I work in the three top tertiary care hospitals in the financial capital of India, and I don't have access to navigation. It's as simple as that. So I'm curious to know how many of you all in the audience actually have access to navigation freely. I think it's not a big number. I know Sameh has it. He comes from the richest country in the world. But most people around don't have access to navigation. And so this talk is not trying to sell you freehand screws. It's just trying to make you understand that you've got to be self-reliant. And if there's an add-on, there's no problem at all. When you look around, just think about all the all the surgeons that you followed, all your heroes, all the guys who have taught you, and all the guys who are the most prolific academicians and surgeons around your area, and ask yourself how many of them actually use navigation. It's almost a very, very small number. And um, there are very few who actually use navigation, and that's mainly to increase their uh, productivity. And we'll come to that a little later. And this is true worldwide. I mean, the god of spine, as we, uh, in today's day and age, has published this uh, you know, article of over 3,000 consecutive screws in deformity surgeries, and all of them were freehand without any navigation, and all of them, uh, you know, did well without any single screw needing a revision. So that's, again, you know, it f works with the philosophy of the world. Most things that are coveted and most things that you love and most things that you trust are handmade. The Rolls-Royce or the, uh, you know, the Pate Philippe, all these are handmade. They are not made by robots or they are not made by machines, and we trust them the most and we want them the most. So freehand technique is actually human navigation. And what is navigation? Actually getting in a sense of the anatomy and then letting your, you know, letting your um, motor senses work around it. Uh, all of you know by now as surgeons that your hand has sensory receptors that are far many than uh, most of the computers around. And if you can just use these to good effect, you're able to navigate the screw across the path of least resistance without really needing technology. And uh, as humans, we are blessed with haptics. Haptics is a sense of biofeedback or physical feedback. So if I shut my eyes and touch a thing around me, I know most likely what it is. You can make out hard from soft, beauty from, you know, from non-beauty. So I think there's a method to this. This is not about sitting here and beating my chest about my ability to pass screws and deformity without navigation. You have to, there's a method to be followed. When you look at the x-ray, it starts right there. As a surgeon, you want to look at the x-ray like this. You just don't want to see an x-ray. You want to start looking at all the key structures there. You want to know in your mind what is the anatomy. So the 3D visualization should come at looking come from looking at the 2D vision itself. You should know the difference between the pedicles that you're looking at. Uh, as a surgeon, we all know that if you find the superior articular process, look for the base of the superior articular process, whether it is C1 or S1, your screw is going to start going in from the, from the correct place. In the thoracic screws, you should know, because this becomes the moot point, because this is where deformity screws go wrong, you need to know the three methods of passing uh, you know, thoracic pedicle screws. So if you fail in one or if you are found wanting in one, you can always deviate. You must have a sense of the 3D uh, mobility or the 3D construct of the spine, especially in deformity surgery. And the easy way to follow it is that you follow the spinous process and the lamina as your landmarks. And uh, that kind of tells you what your angle of, uh, you know, angle of passing the screw should be. But in the end, you've got to path, follow the path of least resistance. The pedicle is the path of least resistance. If you see a blind man walking in a crowded corridor, he will rarely bump into people. He is following the path of least resistance. If he finds the resistance, he's going to turn around. And that's exactly what your hand is going to be doing because the eye is at the tip of your probe, right? Uh, stay perpendicular to the lamina. So that's, again, an easy, easy trick, especially in the curvaceous lumbar spine. And then uh, once you find the cancellous bone, you can use you know, various methods to actually transgress that. One of the easy methods is taking a, ball, a stiff ball tip probe. Sometimes you can use a um, uh, tap and you can just go across that. Let the path of least resistance lead your probe and don't force yourself through. There is the gear shift, gear shift method that's been described. So always uh, I would uh, propose that you use a curved probe with a bluntish tip but with sharp edges so it finds that path. 
um, you can use just ball probes and you can use soft soft feelers. There's a funnel technique described for those of you who don't know. You start digging out like an ice cream cone and take away all the ice cream and the cone is left behind and you you know thread your screw through that cone. Um, <clears throat> with this you can actually pass screws in some of the harder cases and uh, trust me again that I don't have access to uh, uh, you know navigation so I'm more than happy passing these screws in these pretty challenging cases and it's not just me it's everyone in our team uh, does that and uh, I think the you know the learning curve has shortened significantly because every passing generation is getting better and better with their haptics and their hand eye feel so very difficult cases are being done in our team uh, in our unit without uh, you know navigation it's not to say that navigation is better than freehand I mean there's clear data out there and I think common sense says that navigation or navigated screws are go going to be slightly more accurate or more accurate than uh, freehand pedicle screws but there's enough data to say that the gold standard is still freehand like if you ask your favorite AI that's the answer you get like the gold standard of pedicle screws is still freehand pedicle screws because you're a surgeon you're not a carpenter or you're not a you know cook who's you know cutting meat you're a surgeon who's been trained to do this and it come on it makes your life more exciting right so navigated screws may be more accurate than freehand screws, but freehand screws are good enough. That's the message I want to give you, that you don't have to rely on freehand uh, on navigation. And a few philosophical slides that let's say that you start embracing navigation. Where does, where does that take the community from here? Okay, we are not Dubai. We can't, we cannot, every corner in our country cannot afford navigation. And now we are raising the bar of safety and we are moving from optimum safety to extravagant safety. Right? Tomorrow you'll want three navigation machines. Right? There's, there's no end to how much you can do. So you have to have an optimum or a adaptable limit so you can make this surgery achievable in every corner of our country. We work in a country that, as you know, has, you know is uh, challenged in many ways. Uh, what about detraining? So, so, uh, so heavy, heavy duty surgeons are making their fellows put in screws using navigation. Fair, because that will increase their productivity. But what about the fellows? They're not learning this basic skill of passing screws because they're getting reliant on uh, navigation. You know that technology can fail time and again, just as a surgeon can get a heart attack while passing a screw. Technology can fail and if suddenly the technology fails, this uh, fellow is found wanting because he has never learned the art of driving a non-automatic car. He, he needs that technology and that is not acceptable according to me. You cannot detrain. I mean, the real danger is that we start thinking like computers. I mean, that's not okay. We are surgeons and we got to, you know, retain our skill because there's a big difference between robots and humans and you're going to hear much more about that. But it's the touch feel and the haptics that we have that others don't have. So let's not forget the art. Let's not embrace a extravagant technology. Use Google Maps, but don't use a driverless car. And um, finally, um, freehand is making a strong comeback. It just did some, some, uh, you know, some months ago. You all saw all that, and that this got more applause than um, the guys who are using technology. So I rest my case. Thank you.